Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up at the Metro Court Pool. Chio is setting up when Joss shows up. She can't believe he's always here so early, even before they're supposed to be on duty, and asks what does. He says today he walked around, made sure there were no glasses from last night's party, and swept the deck. Joss asks him not to dive in and save someone while she's on duty. He promises he won't. Sunny arrives with Avery, who is taking swim lessons. Joss introduces Avery to Gio and takes her to her swim lesson. Sunny is glad to see Gio again. Sunny knows he has transferred to PCU and asks if he regrets leaving the city. He knows he loves the city and assumes Gio doesn't want him to keep paying his tuition. Gio says it's more complicated than that. He states that PCU has an excellent program. PCU made him first chair, and they gave him a scholarship. Sonny gets that he wants to pave his own way and be independent. Gio notes that he's not that independent, as he's still living with Quartermains. Sonny jokes that he should get hazard pay for that. Natalia appears and is on her phone, leaving a message for Brooklyn to discuss Blaze's last recording session. She asks her to meet her at the Metro Court Pool. Sonny approaches Natalia and is glad to see her again. Sonny explains he's here with Avery, who is taking swimming lessons. Natalia admits she underestimated his other daughter, Christina. She explains that Allison was having a problem recording the other day, and she thought they'd have to scrap the recording. That's when Christina arrived, and suddenly Allison lit up and felt the music. She realizes they really do love one another. She asks if he believes in muses, and he admits he knows about them and dabbled in the music industry in the 90s. Natalie calls those the good times, and hopefully, they are due for more soon. Sunny asks her how she's doing in accepting Blaze and Christina dating. Natalia admits that growing up in Puerto Rico, it was not the most accepting place for that type of love. Sunny says, love is love. She's trying to evolve. Natalia gets a text and has to prove some deception photo shoots and asks if he can give Brooklyn a thumb drive of the last recording should she show up. Sunny says he can. Meanwhile, Gio talks to Joss and asks if she spoke with Michael about the apartment. She hasn't yet, but she's sure it will be fine as Michael would do anything for her. Gio gets it as Uncle Sonny paid for his schooling and more, and he's sure he'd pay for him to tour across Europe if he asked him to, but that would be taking advantage of him. Joss can't believe he's worried about taking advantage of Sonny. Chase and Brooklyn arrive at Alexis' office to see her. She says she's so sorry she didn't make it to their wedding, especially since it would have been the last time she'd see Gregory. She says she's going to miss him. Chase asks how it went with Finn. Alexis admits not so well. They sit down, and Alexis says Finn is worse off than she thought, and unfortunately, he's not going to listen to anyone until he's ready. Brooklyn says their immediate concern aside from Finn is Violet, and they want to protect her. Chase was hoping she'd have advice for them. Alexis warns them that cases like this can get very ugly. She explains the way a father, a loving aunt and uncle, and the state define a safe environment for a child differs. If they report Finn to CPS, Violet could end up in a foster or other temporary home. Her advice is to call a social worker. Chase and Brooklyn thank Alexis and head out. In the hall, Brooklyn sees missed calls from Blaze's mom. He tells her to go handle her as he knows who to turn to for help with Finn, and it starts at GH. Later, Diane drops by Alexis' office and hands her an envelope. She says it's from the Court of Appeals and arrived at her office. Alexis asks, and? Diane says tampering with mail is a federal offense. Alexis takes the envelope but is afraid to open it. Diane says if Alexis won't, then she will. Alexis tells her friend to do it. Diane says she has good news and bad news, so which does she want first? Alexis asks for the good news. Diane says the court has vacated her disbarment. Alexis can't believe she gets to practice law again. Diane tells her to hold on as the bad news is that her license has been suspended for two years. Alexis says she's waited this long, so what is two more years? Diane laughs and says she doesn't have to wait, as it's been four years since this happened, and her two years were up long ago. Diane says she needs 48 hours of legal education before she can reapply to the bar. They dance around and cheer, 
it's over. At the Quartermain stables, James is thrilled to have been riding Comet when he jumped. Tracy comes in and learns about the jump, which Cody lets her know was really Comet stepping over the tray. However, he tells James it still counts. Cody says he'll get her horse saddled up right after he gets James home. James complains about all the girls there. Cody tells him that his family is great. At Maxie's, Georgie asks her mom for her opinion on bathing suits. Spinelli enters soaked, thanks to a bath with Bailey Lou, before they head to the pool. There is a knock at the door, Georgie answers, and it's Mac. They all hug, and he asks if anyone has seen his wife. At the hospital, Felicia, Stella, and TJ discuss a patient, Mr. Preston, who is too young to qualify for benefits for Parkinson's disease. Felicia and Stella are working to find a solution to financially help him. Felicia gets a call from Maxie, but ignores it and says she'll call her back later when she's off duty. Back at Maxie's, she can't believe her mom is ignoring her calls. Spinelli brings out Bailey Lou, and Mac holds his granddaughter. Mac notes Spinelli seems comfortable here and asks if he is a permanent fixture. Georgie blurts out her dad lives here now. Spinelli quickly takes Bailey Lou to the potty before they head to the pool, simply just as an excuse to get out of the room. There is a knock at the door and Cody enters with James. James runs over and hugs his grandpa. Mac tells Cody it's good to see him. Cody says likewise. They shake hands and Mac hears that he is the new face of deception. Maxie says Mac really has been gone a while, as Cody and Sasha are the former faces of deception. Mac asks what he does now. Cody says he still manages the stables, and Maxie says James spends a lot of time helping Cody. James says he jumped over a tree today on Comet, and Maxie exclaims, What? Cody assures them it was more like a big stick, but tells James it still counts. Maxie asks where Mac has been, and he says he was helping a friend, and that's all they will get out of him. Maxie knows he hates secrets, so whatever it was must have been important. Cody decides to leave them to their family reunion. Mac says he hopes to tag along and see James right soon. Cody says he'd like that. Cody leaves with his head hanging low, and Mac sits down with Maxie to discuss what he missed. She talks about how James really likes writing-with Cody and he's like a real-life superhero around here, kind of like someone else she knows. She playfully hits him on the arm. Back at the hospital, Felicia gets the patient's consent to proceed with alternative payment plans and TJ thanks her and says she really thought of everything. Felicia ignores another call from Maxie. At the stables, Tracy leaves a message with Finn, asking him to call her back as she's worried. She finds Cody sitting alone and looking solemn and asks if he's okay. He says he'll get her horse saddled up right away, but she tells him that's not what she asked. Tracy sits down and he says his story is a winding road of him not knowing who his father was for most of his life. He thought it was Mr. Bell, who he grew up with, then he thought it was this other terrible guy. He finally found his father in Port Charles, but his father doesn't know he has a son. Cody explains he had multiple chances to tell him and he doesn't think he can walk this back. Tracy says this is his story so he can walk it wherever he wants. He fears this man will be angry but she says he could be thrilled. Tracy says he has the opportunity to make a fresh start and to have a clean slate with this person. Cody notes he's still lying to him. Tracy says one admission and the rest of his life can begin again. Only he gets to decide when that is. Back at Maxie's, Max says he's proud of Felicia for her hard work as a patient advocate. Maxie wonders if he was part of Mom's plan to get Spinelli to move in. He wasn't and asked if things are good with them. She says they are taking things slowly, which he's glad to hear. Later, Spinelli and the kids return, and Mac takes the opportunity to put Bailey Lou down for a nap. Felicia finally appears and asks what this exciting development is that Maxie has been blowing up her phone over. Everyone just smiles at her. Felicia says what was so urgent as it seems everything is fine. Mac appears and Felicia jumps into his arms. He says he's sorry he was away for so long and it won't happen again. They kiss. Georgie says, ah. Oh. James says, you. And Maxie says, N Brooklyn arrives at the pool looking for Natalia. Sunny lets her know that she just left, which annoys Brooklyn. He tells her to relax and gives her Natalia's flash drive. He can see something is bothering her. She says it's Chase's niece, Violet. 
They sit down and Brooklyn tells Sonny that Finn has been drinking since his dad died and they've tried talking to him, but he says it's none of their business. Sonny notes, Finn would be wrong. Sonny says when a parent is drunk, they become a stranger to their child, and even if the person gets better, that leaves an impression on the child. He went through this with his own father and knows she won't let this happen to Violet. Chase finds Stella at Perks, explaining TJ said he could find her here. She asks what she can do for him. He has an issue and he needs some help, as he knows she's a social worker. She asks if this has to do with his father's death. He explains that was the catalyst and there is a child living with a parent with a substance abuse problem. He says this person's problem recently returned after years of being clean, and the environment is no longer safe for the girl. Chase assumes she knows who they are speaking of, so he doesn't want to get into specifics. Stella asks if the child has been neglected or abused. Chase says no and asks if it has to come to that first before anything can be done. Stella advises he get everything on record and get statements from anyone who witnesses his drunken behavior, especially around the child. Chase asks if she's asking him to build a case against his brother. Stella responds, I'm asking you to build a case for your niece. On the next general hospital, Violet won't leave her dad home alone. Spinelli tells Sam he's found their prize. Anna warns Mac, he's not the sweet gun kid you remember. At the hospital, Terry tells Liz, don't call it a break, call it a meeting. At the pool, Maxi says to Nina, I'm sorry he's what? Carly tells Jason, what he's doing affects you. Now, do you see why I was blowing up your phone? James suggests they get ice cream to celebrate.